Hey yo, what's up? What's poppin'? My name is Pooh Cluster, and this is the fourth game devlog video for Kon Anima. I don't want to waste any time, so let's get started here. Alright, so there were a couple things that I forgot to mention in the last game devlog video, so I'll just quickly go through those really quick. First, I'm just going to turn the music down. Okay, so first is that these characters actually occupy tiles, so you're not allowed to overlap with them. There's collision. You can see I'm colliding with the specific NPC. I forgot to show that last time. I changed it so long ago. Next, we know about how you can control the menu via the keyboard, but what I forgot to show you guys is that when the page is really long, it will actually auto scroll through the page while you're going through it like that, right? And then if you are at the edge of the page and you go to the bottom of the page, like let's say you're at the top of the page and you go to the bottom of the page, it'll auto scroll to the bottom of the page. And likewise, if you're at the bottom, it'll go to the top. And then lastly, for things I forgot to show you guys, is that you can rescale this window to be any aspect ratio, and the game should be able to do it. It can be like really narrow, like this, if you wanted it to be like that for some reason, and it should work out. It can be really skinny too, and that would work out as well. Those are three things that I forgot to show you guys, and there you go, now you see it. In terms of new updates, so one, I added a windowed mode and full screen mode now, like by default we are in this windowed mode here, but if we hit it, we can get to full screen. My recording software takes a little bit, but here we go. Now you can see that we are now in full screen, there's no borders anywhere, nothing like that, and it says full screen right here. If we go back to windowed, now we're back in our windowed form. I added this updates per second into the title of the window. So now there's FPS and there's also updates per second, UPS. And I realized though, if we go into full screen, you won't be able to see those stats at all. So I created this stats option and you can turn it off or on. And then it'll show up here, the FPS as well as the UPS. This is pretty cool because if we go into the music, let me show you real quick. Previously, I mentioned in the last devlog that in the music part of the game, the game will update as fast as possible. And it's kind of hard to demonstrate that, but you can see here now it's matching the FPS. It's basically doing one update per game loop against one render. Frames are renders, and then updates are updates within the game loop. And actually, while I'm here on this music page, let me show you another thing. I realized this going through my last video. It seems kind of inconvenient to start first and then open the menu to open configurations and stuff like that if you wanted to set configurations like turning on autoplay or changing the tempo beforehand. Now you can just open the menu right beforehand, right before the music starts, and then you can set your stuff like turning off the metronome or turning on autoplay or slowing down the music, something like that, or speeding up the music. Now you can do all of that before the music actually starts and then now it will actually do it. And we don't have to start first and then have to open the menu. So that's that. All right, let's go back to the main menu. You can see here in the main menu, we also have the title of the game right here, right above the menu. I did this so you can tell the difference between the main menu and the regular menus. It makes the main menu feel a little bit more main, I suppose. More official, like the, the important menu. Another thing I added was when you go to the player controls, like let's say this is space, then I set it to escape. It sets it to escape and it doesn't close out the entire window and go to the previous page like that. So that's that. If we go up 
to our interact it says e right here i now implemented basically multi-lettered multi-lettered interact symbols so if it says e that's a single letter but if we do something like space it'll change it to space right here and that's more than one letter so you can see a change here if we do left control it'll change it to that if we do left alt it'll change it to that so yeah that's that another thing i added was because i noticed going through the menu when you're on the keyboard tend to tap a lot in order to get to the next button, right? But the thing is, I noticed on the main menu is when you're spamming a specific direction, the player seems like they're sliding. And the reason for that is because frame one is him just standing. It's just the player standing. And the second frame is where the player actually moves. I changed it so when the player starts moving, the player will go immediately to the second frame. That way it doesn't look weird and that he's just sliding. So this still looks a little weird, but it looks less weird than him just sliding around. <laughs> Next thing I implemented, kind of, in the main menu. I remember in the previous devlog I said, eh, I didn't get around to new game, but it should be relatively easy. Well. I was wrong. So if you go to new game, first it'll ask what's your name. You can put whatever you want here. So I'll hit next and this is the cool part right here. Are you ready? So we hit next. We now have a customization screen right here. This is for your specific player. And what I did basically is I decomposed Every single part of the player, from the hair to the eyes, mouth, body, shirt, pants, shoes. And you can customize the colors of each of these parts. And because I customized it, I was able to implement this blinking animation so now the player can blink every once in a while, just like that. So let's say we have maybe like white hair or something like that. Like we're very frosty, maybe. And then we. Make our eyes pitch black. And then our mouth, we can, I don't know, what should we do for it? Should we make it white? <laughs> That's looking kind of weird. Well, let's just, let's just make kind of a little bit normal. Let's give it more red. Give it some blue in there. Give it some color. And then we can drop this down a little bit. We can also use the the minuses, plus and minuses. Okay. But yeah, you can basically just change all of this now and it'll look pretty cool. Let's get some darker darker shoes like that maybe we can even make the shoes like match his top like that is that too pink maybe like fade it out a little bit so yeah you can control each color now of the player and we can even do things like animate it and reset it so what animate does is it's a toggle and it allows you to first view the player in this specific position but if we hit animate and turn it on he'll just begin to start walking and he'll rotate every so often so you can see the character all the way around i think it's pretty cool honestly also i removed the shadow and i basically put one non-changing shadow at the bottom because I think it's way easier on the player's eyes. Like when I was looking at these shadows, I couldn't help but cringe at these shadows. It's really hard to tell what is going on when the shadow is constantly changing and it doesn't feel like the player is grounded to the ground, if that makes sense. 
So that is that. And then if we don't really like our player, we can hit the reset button and it'll bring us back to our normal, our default player sprite. So I actually really like that shirt and pants combo. So I'm just gonna keep that real quick. I think it was something like that, right? And this we can bring down a little bit and then bring these down a couple bits, right? Something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I actually haven't implemented the actual new game function, like where after you get done with all the configurations, you then load into the beginning state of the game. So I haven't implemented that yet. And that's why I said I kind of implemented new game, but I haven't yet. Let's actually go into the game here. When you approach NPCs, like this tombstone or this player, it no longer by default shows the text that they want to tell you. You actually have to go up to them and you have to interact with them before you get that first dialog box, right? So I'll hit E with this guy and then he'll tell me leave me alone rather than approaching him and him instantly saying leave me alone. I wanted to do that because I realized that maybe a player wouldn't want dialog boxes just popping up here and there when they're just roaming the map unless they specifically interacted with something to get that dialog box. I didn't want to be too intrusive on the player if that makes sense. Plus, in real life, you'd have to make some effort to talk to the person first before they just start spewing a bunch of text or a bunch of dialogue at you, right? Also, when you're in this dialogue state, you can no longer move around until you get through the dialogue. So I'm pressing up, down, left, right here, WASD, and it's not working, so I'll have to interact again to get through the dialogue, and now I can move like that. With this player, the one that has the multi-dialogue, this locking feature of not being able to move left, right, up, down is actually helpful because now when we get to that one screen where we have multiple options, we can now use the keyboard to select which option we want. And then it'll give us the responses based on what we said. And the buttons, if you didn't realize, these buttons are also pitched. Before I think they weren't pitched, I think they were the same piano sound, but now it's like one semitone away from each other just to make them a little bit more distinguished. Another thing I added was if we go here, you can see it says instruments now. It used to say the instrument that you have currently selected, but I realize that's not too obvious when the next thing says sheet music. It should be instruments and sheet music. These are like the two items that you have in the game. I figured you just have instruments and then in here, it'll show you the one that you actually have selected. So in this case, we have the keyboard selected, but if we wanted to select the kalimba, it'll select the kalimba instead. Now we can hear the kalimba sounds, right? I still haven't resolved the specific skipping of sounds with the kalimba noises yet or instruments without black keys. So I'm still working on that. And then the last two things I want to show you is I fixed this bug basically. If I show you here, it looks normal. But basically there was a bug where whenever there are scroll bars within the menu and you try to scroll, it'll disorient every single button position after it. The bug is fixed. It no longer does that. Obviously, everything is staying pretty cohesive. Oh, there are two more things I want to show you, and they're very subtle changes, but it helps the game feel a little bit more cohesive. So one is when we hit the quit button here, what used to happen is there used to be this very small, like one pixel of black bar running along the left side of the window and that's because that's one update of the transition update. The transition update was getting called too early. What should happen is that the transition starts after the menu has been put away 
but it was calling one too early before actually closing out. This is it now. It now looks clean and it doesn't have those issues of the one bar over there. And then lastly, in terms of loading, I fixed loading into a room before there's this transition that happens, right? And it happens theoretically smoothly. But actually, if the load takes longer than expected, the transition will hang. And I tried to time it, so the transition hangs right on top, so it's just a completely black screen. But as soon as it gets covered, the load happens before the game can actually draw anything. So you'll see a little bit of world still on the right side, not covered up by the transition. So now I fix that. It's kind of hard to demonstrate it because it doesn't actually happen now. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all that I added for this update. If you guys liked it, let me know in the chat. I'll be trying to respond. Also, I just moved in Seattle, so I'm a little bit tired. Maybe that's why I'm not as energetic as I could be. But yeah, all right. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Make sure to check the Twitter too, you know. Check it. All right. See you guys.